Big boys. Big boy. So, shad is my favorite all-time bait, but I used up all my shad on that crawfish hunt the other day, and I'll put a link to that fun video at the end of this one. So today, I'm gonna do a little competition between some very old tuna head, that's a couple of years old from the bottom of my freezer, some chicken, which has never been my favorite, and some $2.50 salmon fillets. Oh, that's some gnarly, mushy salmon. So one of my ropes got all rotten and broke off of there. So improvise that with my strap. Should work. I've seen you willikers do worse with less. Then just give it a gentle lift. Oh, I got one in there for sure. But how far can we get it? It's gonna be kind of hard getting them up all this way. Boy, those are some beauties. Oh, they were big too. Lost them both. We'll let them get snagged in there a little better. Those are a big old crab. <laughs> that was an hour and a half soak. Let's see how we did. Ooh, very light. <laughs> There's one keeper. That one's a keeper for sure. I think the rest, there might be two males in there. There might be two keepers. This one for sure, and no, that's a female. So. Ooh. So smoky, you can stare at the sun. Man, this is intense. Well, I got a few crab out here today. Not a bad way to kill a few hours. But it is so darn smoky, I'm actually getting ash in my eyes now. So I think I'm gonna head back. I got enough for a nice meal. Certainly seen better crabbing. This is a pretty crabbed out pier. I'd like to come out here at night and probably do a lot better. Well, last week the crabbing was pretty mediocre. I got uh, three keepers and a couple of pulls there. And in case you're wondering, the chicken won that competition there between the old tuna and the $2.50 salmon fillets. And the chicken probably did best because it was the only real fresh bait that I had. And I don't care what anybody says, fresh bait is always better. So, this week I'm gonna do a little night crabbing. It's about five o'clock now. The tide is just about low, so we'll get these pots out and fish this incoming tide and see how we do. And again, I'm gonna do a hanger and a bottom bait. Cut these up a little bit, get those juices flowing. And of course, some kind of gloves. You get salmonella out here just as easy as you get it in the kitchen. And this is raw chicken, so be careful. All right, clip in the bottom. Clip in the hanger. Close that up. Make sure these are all pulled up. Make sure all your doors are facing inward. Good to go.
<laughs> oh, dang it. Ooh, very heavy. Big boys, big boy. Oh, that was money. Look at that sucker right there. That's a big, big boy. Look at this. Oh boy, he's gonna get me. That's gonna hurt. I could not hold him like an idiot. Just <laughs> the way to hold him. Look at this. Ooh, doesn't even fit in the gauge. Doesn't even fit. That's what I like. <laughs> oh yeah. Look, see. Keeper. Four. Already better than last week. Boom, boom, boom. Five. Looks good too. Yep, six. Well, that first pull went really well. Got six keepers out of there, including a couple of jumbos, so that already made my trip worth it. But I'm not gonna leave them soaking in this water for very long. I'm gonna go get these up to the cooler and just put them on ice and keep them moist, but not submerged in water. Because like this, they'll quickly starve themselves of oxygen and die, and they'll just start to go bad as soon as they die. So we'll get these into the cooler and then kick it for another hour or so and try again. Well, the wind's dying down a bit, and I still got a little daylight, so probably now is a good time to do a little bit of a crab tutorial and basically talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I see people making when they're out here doing this. And for me, the number one mistake I see people making is using old rotten bait. And a lot of people swear by it because they think it smells so bad that the crab can pick that scent up from a lot further away, but you're really not going to find a lot of critters that prefer a rotten piece of meat to a fresh one. So for me, fresh bait has always been better. Now, another mistake I see people making is using crab rings and not checking those things every 10 or 15 minutes. That crab ring sits flat on the bottom and that allows crab to move in and out of there. So if you're letting it soak a long time, they can come in, eat all the bait they want, and then just head off and then you come an hour later and pick up your crab ring and you got no bait or no crab and that's no fun for anybody. So pick those crab rings up every 10-15 minutes and that's really a lot more fun to check them frequently anyway. Now I like to use crab cages and I like to check my crab cages every hour to hour and a half. Uh, not much longer than that and I'm really just checking to make sure that a seal hasn't come in and messed up the cage or taken the bait make sure one of the doors isn't blocked really checking to make sure something is not wrong with the pot more so than if there are any crab in there now a third mistake i see people make is to just chuck your crab rings or cages doesn't matter just throw them way out there and let that line go slack when you do that that thing can come down it can land upside down it can land on its side and you know in either case you're probably not going to get any crab so you want to chuck it out a little ways lower that thing down and keep it upright until it hits the bottom now another mistake and this is a big one keeping undersized crab that can get you in a whole lot of trouble and it is not worth it so those are just a few of my crab <laughs> no-nos but everybody likes to do this stuff a little bit different shoot some people like to just chuck them out there and go have a bunch of beers and then come back and see if they got a nice crab for dinner and there's nothing wrong with that you do it how you like now one last bit of advice and this is really really important when you get all your equipment home give everything your pots and your ropes and everything a really thorough rinse with fresh water to knock that salt off of there that salt water will corrode everything and just break stuff so give it a really 
thorough rinse and then instead of lasting a couple seasons, this stuff can last you a lifetime potentially. All right, here are the crab. They've been out here overnight. They're on ice and nice and cold and damp, but not underwater again, because that will kill them. Keep them cold and damp, and they'll stay alive for a good 12 hours, maybe even a whole day. They may not look alive right now because they're so cold, they're kind of sleeping, if you will, but if I get in here and poke one, yeah, you see a little bit of movement, and that's all you really need to let you know they're alive. Now, as soon as I start rinsing these guys and they warm up a little, they're gonna get angry and they're gonna come after me. So, I'm gonna have to watch out. Now, I'm using my jet burner today and this thing absolutely kicks butt anytime you wanna heat up a large amount of something very quickly because it burns very hot. Now, there's a few ways you can go about cooking these guys. You could boil them, but with this many crabs, that would take so much water that that would take a whole bunch of time to get to boiling and then to reheat after I put the crab in there so they would actually end up cooking for longer than I want them. Now, I'm gonna steam these guys, which would be about seven minutes per pound going off your biggest crab because you wanna make sure that one's done. And these crab, my biggest one's around three pounds, so I'm gonna go for 20 minutes on these. And then, what I actually do the most is sort of a hybrid where I'll put a few inches of water in the pan and then the bottom few crabs are under that water so they're gonna actually boil and everything above that is gonna steam and that's really an easy way to do it and what I generally do but this time I'm gonna steam them all because I think it concentrates the flavor just a little bit better and I don't have a big steamer basket but what I do have is this canning rack and if I turn that upside down into my canning pot, then the crabs can sit up here above the water and steam. First thing I wanna do is get that in there and then put a few inches of water in there, you know, enough so you're not, of course, over the top of the rack so the crab can sit above that and steam. So I'm just gonna rinse these off a little bit to knock off any mud or grime they picked up in the bay. Don't really have to scrub them or anything. And that water's a little warmer and that's gonna bring these guys right back to life. Oh yeah, we got a real good boil going. All right, so I'm gonna get my crab, start dropping them in here, see how many we can get in there. Sorry, folks. Oh, yeah, these guys are angry now. And a nice big boy. Get this thing real nice and hot and as soon as this is very hot and steamy I'll start the timer and I'm gonna go 20 minutes on these guys. Ooh, all right carefully carefully gonna take the lid off of that because that is hot. Oh but look at that. Oh boy that smells like the sea. <laughs> But now I need to get these guys cooled off and I could dunk them in an ice bath, but I'm just gonna take these out, set them on the table here in this cold morning air. Now these guys are getting cool enough that I can put them into the refrigerator and let them chill all the way down. But first I'll go over how to clean one of them real quick. And a lot of people will clean these before cooking them, but I prefer to cook them shell on because there's a lot of stuff in that shell that helps flavor the body meat. And when you clean them first, it just, they taste a little bland to me. So we'll get this guy, grab it right here, flip that piece of the shell out and just pop the top. Now get rid of that. And all around here, you've got the gills, tear those off. Super easy. These mandibles here, you can pop those off. And then all this stuff in the middle, you can pop right out. And then, normally I'd be doing this at the sink and just give that a little rinse on the inside. But out here, I'll just give it a gentle rinse with the hose. Knock out the yellow bits. And there you got a nice, 
clean crab, and that is one of my favorite foods in the world. <laughs> in fact, I gotta get a little piece of that right now. Oh, 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 oh man, some of that body meat there. Ooh. Oh, 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 it's so good. Well, I hope you can get out there and get your own big mess of crabs, and if you do, I know you're gonna love them. <laughs> Thanks for watching.